Welcome back to another Squadcast. We are back from the loop that was the break. Uh, <laughs> hi, as Caboose said. Uh, we're going to continue with our 2021 predictions. And you know what, Caboose, because you waved so nicely, why don't you kick our next section off? We're going to be talking about known titles uh, that have been announced and mm -hmm. that we're stoked are coming out in 2021. Uh, oh, um... I wonder if anyone can guess what my game is. I don't, I don't think anyone can. I don't have a clue. Uh, no it's idea. this like very, it's a small indie game um, based on these characters, like very like unknown characters from like this world that I don't think a lot of people here know about. Uh, it's called DC Comics. Whatever. I'm going on you guys with the details. Think, yeah. Maybe. Um, it's this game called Marvel Gotham Knights. Right? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, Camille. <laughs> uh, it's Gotham Knights. Of course, it's Gotham Knights. Um, this was the game that, like, for a whole year, had everyone speculating what the hell it was even about or what it even was. You know, we were all sitting here like a new Batman game's coming from WB Montreal. Is it an Arkham game? Is it a new thing? And then DC Fandom comes around in August of last year, and it's huge, and everyone goes crazy. Some people weren't on board initially because it was being marketed as, like, an RPG. Now people are like, wait a second, that's actually cool. Um, and so everyone's like, everyone's slowly starting to get really excited about this. And I can't wait. I'm, I am just hyped for the concept that I could be free roaming the open world of whatever this new Gotham City is going to be like. And a friend of mine can just join my game mm -hmm. and we can, yeah. he can be on one side of the map beating people up. I can be on the other beating some other people up. We can meet in the middle at some point and beat some people up together and just like have a good time, like free roam in the city and, and, you know, just having fun. That sounds like something super cool to me. And then with that, of course, you as well are going to have like a fully fleshed out story that is going to have uniqueness between whatever character you're playing as during cutscenes. You yeah. know, some characters are going to have uh, more interactive dialogue with certain characters if they have a more of a closer relationship with that character, depending on the cutscene or depending on the, the story mission. And I think that stuff's awesome. It gives you this element of replayability. There's not going to be any level gating in the open world. You're going to be able to explore, explore all of it right out of the get go. Like everything that they're setting this game up to be the promise of Gotham Knights sounds like just a super fun, loose RPG. Like the RPG yeah. elements seem like they're there, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look like it's an RPG in the way that something like Cyberpunk was being marketed or something like Assassin's Creed Valhalla was yeah. being marketed. You know, it's going to be an RPG, R RPG in that there's going to be skill trees, there's going to be gear, but at the end of the day, it sounds like you can just kind of get on your bike, roam around and have fun. You know, you don't need yeah. to be so laser focused on creating a build for your character. And it, like the designs look cool. The aesthetic is cool. It's, it's not like the, the grungy grimy Gotham that was built in the Arkham games, which I think is great. I love that. Um, but this game has more of the, uh, the neon lights yeah. sort of Batman forever, Joel Schumacher yeah. type of Gotham city, which some people might see as a bad thing, but I see as like a really great thing. Um, it's just more hyper stylized and comic booky, and I'm very excited about it. I can't wait to see what this game's gonna be like. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing that excites me the most is that it's familiar enough that being a, a fan of the Arkham games, I, I'm looking at this game and I'm like, okay, there's there's little bits in here that I can pull from to make me feel like I'm playing an Arkham game, but there's mm -hmm. so much there pushing that uh, franchise forward in such a unique way. Um, something like you were saying, like the co-op elements, that's awesome. The cast of characters you're able to play as just makes so much sense uh, mm -hmm. for what story they're telling. Um, and then plus, yeah, what you were saying about the aesthetic, the neon is awesome. I, I think yeah. that's such a great, great thing to do for Gotham because it's it's always brown, it's always black, it's always just kind of muted colors. But to, to come out with like this younger cast of characters, they're vibrant, they're they're out there just to to kick butt why not just let that world kind of represent that with neon lights br bright colors just flashing everywhere i'm really excited to see more of this game yeah and i feel like it's just um when you think of not even the arkham games but how dc deals with um batman it's very rare rare sorry that we see the bright colors the neon uh -huh. lights um the cheesiness of like comic books and i love that and i feel like it's a great way to kind of play with um you know different styles 
the humor that they could have um, within it as well. Mm -hmm. But my concern is, and Caboose, like when I hear you talking, it reminds me of Avengers when you were talking about Avengers before the game release, right? So that's the only hesitation there um, as to why it was not necessarily on my list, just because I don't know how that experience will be. I think the thing that separates this game very clearly from something like Avengers is that Avengers is meant to be this like, and, and I understand what they were going for with, with Avengers here, but I just think they missed the mark in the execution, but essentially the reason why it wasn't like a straight up open world game was the idea that the Avengers don't just operate in one city and protect one city. They protect the world. And so with that, they're like, they're traveling the world and going to different places around the globe. It's just that I think, like what they did there didn't really work, but I think considering that Gotham Knights is more of the street level's heroes, you know, it's it's not even like the idea that Batman protects Gotham City, but rather that, you know, all the sidekicks kind of they 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 roam around, they do their own thing. But now because Batman's dead, they have to all take on that responsibility. And this has to become your city. This has to become your legacy, if Batman's really dead, at least. Um and so uh, I, I like that. I like that it's just more street level. You have one city to protect. You don't got to be going around the entire world. And I like as well that there's going to be freedom in that. It's not just a small hub world or multiple small hub worlds. It's an yeah. open world, a full city that you can explore the boroughs of and the alleyways and, and get to find, you know, look for Easter eggs or if they're going to do Riddler trophies again, something like that, you know, collectibles. Uh, I think that I'm down for that. I think that's what's going to separate it from Avengers is that there's going to be a lot more freedom here than yeah. you're provided with in Avengers. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm just so excited for a next gen. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I'm just excited on. for a next gen Batman. And I think like when you're talking about that stylization of the world and giving it more glow, the first thing that popped in my head obviously was ray tracing. Everybody, every oh. company is excited to, to show tracing. that off. Give me those puddles. ray tracing, the puddles. <laughs> <laughs> but like overall, like I think that this game is really going to, to kind of create this new Batman or not even a new Batman, but like a new DC experience in the next gen where we start to get in touch with some of the other characters and personalities that the the whole Batman world in Gotham has to offer. Mm -hmm. This is really going to be a chance for some of these other side characters, you know, to shine and potentially get their own game. Yeah, I agree. That's what's exciting about it for me as well is like, listen, if Batman's dead or not, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we like there's obviously everyone's running the theory of like, yeah, OK, he's dead, <laughs> you know, like uh, but I think what we do know is that the four main playable characters are not Batman and yeah. to give the spotlight to these other characters that may be lesser known is a bit of a risky thing to do. And I like the risk that's being taken here because, yeah, you, just like you said, Malik, this could introduce an entire audience to characters like Batgirl, characters like Nightwing, Red Hood, Robin. Mm -hmm. And in the future, if they add DLC, we can get characters like Batwoman, you know, Cat, Cat, Catwoman could be in there as well. Um, they could do all sorts of Batwing, a newer character from the comics that they can introduce Lucius Fox's son. That could be something super fun. They have like, there's just a whole there's a whole bunch of batman sidekicks an endless yeah. line of batman sidekicks that they could choose from to then create the first experience the first exposure of that character to a new audience uh and then someone could see like a red hood and be like i want to learn more about that character and and see all these great stories that have already been created for him and next thing you know you got like almost like another miles morales on your hand where they give that character the push in something mainstream like a game and it leads to maybe a TV series, a movie, like like yeah. pushing that character into stardom. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, I, I can't wait for that game. Like, I feel like it's just it's going to be fun, but I'm still a little a little anxious just to see how it's executed. I don't know if it will be, um, you know, a smooth release. <laughs> <laughs> whenever it comes out but i think do so? think it has i mean let's look at the games that have come out recently right like it's it's really tough to have a lot of faith in some of these developers and publishers pushing games out uh, just because of the track record right so yeah. i just need my confidence to be boosted uh by getting some great titles back and back right 
Um, but I, I want to move on because I think mine is very important. So whatever. Um, no, I, I feel like the three of us, Steve, Malik, we kind of share my choice as well. Uh, God of War. I feel God of War is that title a lot of people are anticipating because of how 2018's um, left off. Yep. There's so much potential, the tease to Thor, that arrival. What does that mean um, for like ugh, Kratos' son? Like what's going to happen there? There's so many unanswered questions that I need to be answered. And I've been itching my skin, waiting for them to come out. And finally, we're going to get it this year when they revealed that. And we know that we're getting it this year. And that I'm going to be able to put on my headset and hear Christopher Judge's voice, like just in <laughs> my head. He did an amazing job for taking over as Kratos' voice in 2018's God of War. And, you know, I, you know, Terrence Carson was great as well, but I feel like his voice is Kratos and I want to hear it again. So I'm really yeah. psyched for that one. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think if they're able to get this game out this year. I'm still kind of hesitant. I'm like 75% sure they can, but 25% is like, maybe it can get really? delayed. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, we'll see. I, uh, but, the, but the other thing that gets me really excited is that just recently they announced that there's going to be a, a comic uh, coming out that kind of uh, acts as like a prequel to the 2018 game. So I, I just feel like going into uh, Ragnarok's release, like, the hype is going to be really high and I, yeah. I'm right there for that ride because yeah, I, I can't wait to see where they're going with this story and how they're going to follow up one of the best games of the past generation. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it, it, it's such an undertaking, but I, I believe they can do it uh, given the time that uh, they've been putting into this game. I just really hope it comes out this year and not delayed. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, when you think about the character development of Kratos over the generations it, yeah. It's just mind blowing. He's not the same person. And it's so rare that you get that in games where you have this true development. I mean, like, even in Uncharted, the, the development was mediocre, like, at best when you compare it to God of War and Kratos, you know, becoming being this man of rage and losing everything to, to now having a son and just like the hardships that he has to face. I mean, Ragnarok, especially when they made that trailer, I was just goosebumps. I, I had goosebumps because they do everything so intentional in God of War down to the sound design. And I remember yeah. that feeling of first throwing the ax. And that's all that anyone talked about forever. Like that, that was it. Like that was like the selling point of it before anyone really got their hands on the game is just how it felt. So like you said, being back in that world, hearing his voice in your ears, it's just going to be amazing. Yeah. Now, uh, I know, I'm yeah. in the same boat. I'm in the same boat as everybody. Like God of War is just straight up one of the best games just ever made. Uh, the PlayStation 4 one, that is. Um, I, I think the whole franchise is awesome. I actually like kind of sort of grew up on it. Like not playing them myself, but like my brother loved the God of War games, and I like I was used to just watch him play games when I was not good at them or was able to understand them. Um, and I just remember like going through the first three, and especially with God of War three being such a massive game with all these crazy set pieces. Like the game opens up with you just on a giant, you know, like it's it's insane. Um, and so God of War really carried that in having those big set pieces, but also kind of grounded itself a little more in being be more character driven and about a father and son and i yeah. loved that uh and and i can't wait to see where they're gonna take it i mean i'm down to fight thor you know i want to see i want to see <laughs> that uh that mythology explored a little more you know it's not thor's not just marvel at this point he's uh you know so like they could they could definitely get into that stuff and i'm looking forward to it mm -hmm. yeah um now i know steve malik you guys had other choices as well yeah, uh, so just to quickly fill in that, like, 25% uh, chance that they don't release the game, I just threw in Halo Infinite uh, just to kind of go in there. Um, right. There yeah. Uh, for me, I'll, I'll keep it somewhat short, but I just feel like given the, the delay uh, that we've seen, like, almost a year going from when it was initially supposed to come out to when it's intended to come out now, mm -hmm. paired with the fact that it's now aligning with the 20th anniversary of Xbox, this is going to be an important game. Like yeah. Microsoft is going to go all out for this game. And the fact that 343 now has all the time that they need to kind of go off on their vision of what they wanted this game to be and not kind of feel rushed to deliver, deliver the game alongside the Xbox Series X. 
I have a lot more faith in the studio now, uh, given that, you know, Halo 5 was, you know, had lukewarm reception. Uh, Master Chief Collection came out and obviously had problems. It's in great shape now, but Halo is kind of in this like funk where I don't feel like a lot of people are really enthused to new enthusiasts are jumping into the franchise. I think Halo Infinite can really be that that push to bring more people into the fold because I I love Halo and I want more people to adore it just as much as me. So I feel like Halo Infinite is going to be that that one that opens the gate for the franchise for a lot of new people. Yeah, uh, and I mean, I think as well, one of the biggest things that Halo Infinite has going for it is the free multiplayer. That is like an yeah. unprecedented thing that they're doing where it's not even like a quote-unquote free, like you have to pay for Xbox Live Gold free. No, it's free, free. to play. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be available on PC, so anybody can just download Halo Infinite multiplayer as soon as it's out. And I think that's awesome. Uh, I obviously want them to hit the mark with the story. I'm really worried about that part, considering a lot of what we've been hearing behind the scenes in that, right. you know, big people in the studio, like people who are kind of heads of the studio or at least of the project have been leaving. Yeah. Um, that's uh, discouraging, but I, I still have hope that they're going to potentially put out a good product here. If the story misses the mark, that's going to suck. But as long as the gameplay is good and the multiplayer is uh, is something that, I'm willing to sink in a ton of hours into then then great at least they landed it there um but here's hoping fingers crossed for a, a good halo game because 343 has uh, had a bit of a, a rocky go at it with uh with halo yeah i feel yeah. like a lot of fans are going to be looking forward to a great halo game um but yeah the story is where my hesitation comes, how that's going to be handled, especially because multiplayer, as they're releasing it separately, could always go through its updates and patches. Um, and I feel like no matter what, the Halo community and the esports side has been waiting for another Halo game. So it will have Long some time. success no matter what, right? Um, but it's the story uh, for me that I'm just a bit hesitant in, and I'm hoping uh, they have a really solid uh, story and good release as well. Yeah, and to add on to that, if we get Halo Esports back, I will be so happy. I, I'll i be over the moon. Like, yeah. Halo Esports was so fun to watch. When Call of Duty Esports was just starting to get going, Halo yeah. was thriving and dominating. So, oh, yeah. like, that was going to be, that's going to be really nice. I, I am skeptical about Halo Infinite, but, you know, we'll have to see what they do. I mean... It's only a waiting game at this point. But uh, yeah. my, my other choice was Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk 2077 2.0. I just want them to make the game playable. Like, just just fix the game. That would be nice. Yeah. It would be cool. <laughs> that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Improvements from 2020. Always nice. It's a maybe that's their New Year's resolution. Just come out with 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. A good fix. <laughs>